Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Saida Sande, a legal advisor by profession. I run a all about food company, which is a company that does daily meals. We do corporate meals and we do outsourcing halal meals to corporates. My love for cooking started at the age of eight years old. And since then it hasn't left me. My kids love my food and my son is actually the biggest critic of it all. Today we'll be um, cooking two different um, dishes, a crayfish curry and a curry um, curry. The curry is a yogurt based curry. Before we start, I'm going to run through the ingredients with you for the crayfish curry. We're going to use grated tomatoes, coriander powder, cumin powder, chili powder, turmeric. We're going to use salt, some sugar, tomato paste, and some lime juice. For the curry, curry, we're going to use yogurt. I use a double cream yogurt because I find that it doesn't curdle as normal yogurt. I'm using a paste of chilies and coriander, some fresh chilies, coriander leaves, and some curry leaves. We're going to start now with the crayfish curry. I'm going to heat my pot on a moderate heat, not too high. I'm going to get my pot on. We're going to cook about a half a kilo of crayfish, so we're going to require about two tablespoons of sunflower oil. I'm going to add some oil to the pot. While the oil is heating up, I'm going to add some curry leaves. This will just enhance the flavor of the crayfish curry. I'm just going to wait for the oil to heat up before I add the grated tomato. Before we start with the crayfish curry, I'm going to explain to you how I made the paste. I prefer a paste compared to just throwing in the spices as is. So in a food processor, I add some coriander powder, which is this, some cumin powder, some chili powder, and some turmeric with a few sprigs of garlic, and I blend it. Oops, the oil is a bit too hot. And that's how I got to this paste, which makes the curry much smoother and more delicious to eat. So I'm going to add my 500 gram tomato, which I grated, to my curry leaves and my oil. Whenever I'm cooking fish, my daughter, my five-year-old daughter, she closes all the doors in the house because the entire house smells like fish. And I've learned to leave the front door open and the back door open so that the fish smell can actually escape in the house. Because she doesn't eat fish and she hates crayfish and prawns. Okay, so while the tomato is cooking, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of the paste. You could add more if you want more heat. I prefer spicy food than too hot food because then you don't actually really enjoy the food if it's too hot. Okay, so you add your paste and you stir. And you'll see the oil starts to evaporate on top. And I've learned over the years that once you have oil on a fish curry or a crayfish curry, you're actually, you're actually becoming a pro at it because the oil on top makes it top class, as my mom would always say. Okay. So I'm going to taste. I think it needs salt. You can add salt to your own requirements because I know a lot of people don't like a lot of salt in their food. So while that's cooking, I'm going to add some tomato paste. The tomato paste is just to make it a bit, like it gives it a bit of a spicy, sour 
type of taste which I actually like in a crayfish curry. I'm going to add 2 teaspoons of sugar. The sugar is there just to take the sourness of the tomato paste out. So it neutralizes the flavors. It's smelling amazing already. So while that's cooking for about 8 minutes, this curry doesn't cook very long. I want to run through how to clean the crayfish tails. I know my mom hates cleaning crayfish and prunes because it's just too much work. But it's actually quite simple. I've cut the tail in half. So all you do is you just take a kitchen scissors and you cut it down and you pull the vein that's there and you just clip off these, what do you call them, scales? <laughs> and there we go. And what I do is I like to rinse it and use some Riola towel just to pat it dry because crayfish also retains water. So if you're going to have too much liquid in your crayfish, you're going to have a watery curry. And I like a thick paste curry, which I prefer. So this is cooking. So we're going to give it another few minutes. And then we're going to add our crayfish to the curry. We're going to add a squeeze of lime. I find lime to be a bit sweeter than a lemon because sometimes it becomes too sour. Okay. Can you add the crayfish now? So crayfish is really quick to cook. The moment you see the color of tail turn pink, then you know your crayfish is done. Because if you're going to overcook the crayfish, it's actually going to become very tough. Because when you're reheating the, the food, you're actually cooking it again. So once, you, once the shell turns pink, you actually switch off your pot and you just leave the um, curry as is until serving time. So we're going to leave that and I'm going to reduce the heat a bit. Okay. So now I'm going to heat up a pot for the curry. But before I start with that, I just want to run through the paste that I've made. In a food processor, I added two cloves of garlic, um, a, about one chili, and a, two tablespoons of flour, and some coriander leaves. And I blitzed it together, and this is the consistency I, I got from the um, paste. So I'm going to add the yogurt to the pot. I like using a double cream yogurt because I find that it's nicer, it's creamier and if you're panting then it's healthy. <laughs> okay, I just want to rinse my spoon. Okay, so now we're heating up the yogurt. Please, you need to take care here because if your pot is too hot, the yogurt is going to curdle and you're going to have sour milk, which is not cool. So we're just checking up on our curry and it's almost ready. So I'm going to add the paste to the yogurt. And then we're going to add some turmeric powder just to give it a bit of that yellow curry uh, color. So like a pinch, because we're using a cup of yogurt, a pinch of chili powder and a pinch of phenol powder or berry shop as they call it. And we're going to add some garlic. We're just going to heat that through. And we're going to add some butter. Once that's all warm. Okay, so back to the crayfish curry. The shells have turned pink. So now before we switch off the pot, we're going to add some coriander leaves. 
After I fish curry is ready, so I'm just going to put off the pot because we don't want to have rubbery crayfish. And I think our curry is almost getting there. I'm just, I don't want it to curdle. So once your butter has melted, you will find that it will turn a nice yellowish, greenish color. And please taste because tasting is important when you're cooking. So we're going to add some salt. We're going to add some curry leaves. And then we're going to add some coriander leaves, my favorite. Because the butter has almost melted. And we're almost good to go for supper. Okay, so our dish, our two curries are ready. And we're going to serve it with a kichiri. A kichiri is a, it's rice that is cooked with a coconut milk and mung dal in there. Everyone has a different version of a kichiri, but we're going to plate it up with some kichiri and some aloo fra, which is potato in um, mustard seeds. And we're going to serve our crayfish, our curry and our kichiri with that. Okay, so the final product I've plated is the crayfish curry that we've made now. The curry here, and this is the kichiri. And I've made some aloo fra, which complements the dish completely. So I'm going to show you how we actually have it. I'm going to just dish some rice here. My recipes will be on Kukalal's website and the blog, so please follow the blog. Um, there will be much more much more um, Indian cuisine on there so please have a look at the um, website so this is how we do it we add the curry over the kitchen and then put a crayfish towel on the side some curry and we're going to add some aloo fra which is just potato with some mustard seeds Bon appétit